What's up guys, Duster McDangles back here with another video and welcome back to the Pittsburgh Penguins franchise mode rebuild series with Rick Rebuild and if you guys are new to the channel be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future action as well as we are trying to grow the community here guys we're so close to 400 subscribers as well as we are on the road to 500 so let's join the community guys let's build this team together let's build the community together but in today's episode we're going to be getting into more Gameplay more simulation to see if we can get here. I'd say maybe mid January to see where the team sits here in today's episode. And if you guys did miss the last one, be sure to go ahead and check that out. It is going to be in the playlist here for all of the franchise mode episodes. But in today's episode, we've got I reset the scouts and all their scouting before this episode as we will take a look at the updated draft class here as of right now. Again, we have some decent scouts in there. We've got Shane Wright obviously up there. I'm hopeful that we're going to be down mid-range when it comes to the first round and picks. Honestly, this Kemmel guy might be pretty decent. Joachim Kemmel. Pretty solid player. Character Guy Lafleur. He's three years out for NHL. And I'm trying to see if our scouts have any gems or busts. And as of right now, they have yet to find any. But so far, so good when it comes to the scouts. Again, we're going to be looking for those late round picks. At least for the first round, hopefully. Because so far, so good. 18-9-1 on this season, we're going to get into the simulation here against the uh, just barely above 500 Buffalo Sabres as we will get the first pre done and dusted 2-2 Eichel, Cousins, Crosby, Carter on the goals. After the second period, it is 3-3. We've got a tight game here, so we're actually going to hop into this one, play the first game of the episode and see what we can do. Got a bit of a barn burner here against the Buffalo Sabres as we've got the original Winter Classic jerseys for both teams here in this game today as we've got a big hit there by Dumoulin on the attacking player as Gensel up through the neutral zone. We've got speed down through the zone trying to go blocker side on the goaltender unable to connect as ooh, Gensel almost in the middle there. By himself as Eichel coming down gets poked off his stick. The defensive zone look to get this thing out. Gensel's off to the races past Darlene. Darlene trying to get past him, but this time Gensel on the play is able to get that thing into the back of the net. As he wasn't able to the first time, he does this time around. And he's got his 13th goal of the season. Nice little backhand, forehand, quick little tuck there on Anderson. And we find ourselves up one here in the third period. Four to three. We're going to look for more here to keep this thing going. Keep the lead and hopefully take the two points here today. Wins it back. We're going to find Marino. Who finds Demers. Who's got that really nice one-timer that we've come to find out this season. Back to Marino. At the point. Can we find something? Marino. Trying to get the shot off. Unable to do so. Demers from the point once again. And that is tipped and nicely saved by... C by, uh, I was about to say Cousins, but it was actually Anderson who he deflects that off into the corner again. Can we? I was going to say, can we find Demers there for a third 1T? Unable to do so as the Sabres running out of time. Crosby off to the races. Sidney Crosby is going to take the shot on Anderson. And Crosby, top line is out. We can expect the empty net coming as Chad Ruido trying to get something going down the middle of the ice, but unable to do so as Crosby trying to win this battle back with the puck. Sabres find the point. I'm surprised they haven't pulled their goalie yet. Now they do. The Buffalo Sabres. Where's that extra man? There he is. We're going to find Crosby. Can Crosby ice this one? He's going to be able to do so. Getting his second goal of the game. That is going to seal the deal here. 5-3. to three in this game and if there's another goal we'll show it but if not again the game looks like it is lagging behind as it has been recently but we'll get back to the simulation page and see what else we can do moving forward and as we win that game five to three that was a big one against the buffalo sabers we'll see what we can do going away to the new jersey devils who at this point in time 31 points they are not doing the best but they are above 500 so you never know with the young up-and-coming Devils what they're going to bring, and we've got that home-and-home home with them here. 
in the next two games. We'll get the quick sim period 1, 0, 0. Quick sim period 2, still 0, 0. We will slow sim period at number 3 and see if we're going to be able to come out on top in this thing. Devils Ty Smith gets the goal on Casey DeSmith. Hopefully we'll be able to try and tie this thing up. Quick sim. Oh, wow. Three goals. And the Devils come out on top. Thought we'd be able to get that thing finalized there in the third period, but unable to do so to get our 20th win of the season. So we'll see what we can do here against the Devils once again here on home ice this time as we are now battling for a wild card position. This division is one of the toughest in hockey every year to try and make the playoffs and every game counts. Period one, we're up 2-1 as Moreno scored from center ice. That's kind of crazy. Period two goes by, 2-1. Quicks in period three, Carter and Gensel on the goal. So we're able to pull away in this one against the Devils to win 4-1 to one on the day. Always nice to see that. Tuka Rask has a broken toe, and he's out till January. Well, that's not what you like to see. Um... Man, that kind of sucks big time because we just have Louis Domingue. Well, we're going to have to bring Louis Domingue up to the major leagues. And we're going to have to go to edit lines. So let's go to the edit line table. DeSmith is going to be have to be our guy here moving forward, which is not what you want to see. But, I mean, it is what it is. Goaltenders go down, and that's exactly why... We have this simulation on for that reason to make it somewhat realistic when it comes to injuries. And right now we're dealing with it. So that it is what it is. We're going to have to make it work moving forward here against the Flyers. Who it's going to be a tough game because the Flyers are rolling. They're 19, 10, and 2. This is basically a battle for second place essentially because rangers only up by one point on us and actually now i want to take a look because i did send some scouts out to take a look at some of the trades especially the one that i proposed to you guys at the end of the last episode and i know i haven't honestly we didn't get a lot of comments on it but i do at least want to take a look at this trade after scouting uh, Brendan Sod, so we'll have to look and see here what he actually is. There he is, Brendan Sod, 29 years old. Let's see what he is. Top six forward exact. And I thought we had scouted him. Yeah, we did. Okay, so December 19th, fourth line forward. That is interesting. Okay, so he doesn't fit our third line, which kind of sucks. Um, really going to have to pass on him. That's quite unfortunate. But I do have a backup plan because I did take a look at a division opponent. We did scout some of their players. I don't know how far they are into the scouting but we have scouted some players, one of them being Jordan Stahl. Now, I don't know if we're going to have the money to work this out. We might be able to do so. And I'm trying to see, was he scouted? He was. Forward line one, and that's unfortunate. Line scouted on, offensive line three. Could bring him back to the squad. That would be very interesting to see. But if we, we can't bring him in because forward line one, he's not going to work. Because that's Crosby's line. So we do we did actually scout some other players on their squad. <laughs> and one of them being was Kakanyemi. He was another player that we went ahead and he's actually currently being scouted. And he only fits forward line one as well. Which kind of sucks. So it's it's tough to see. But we also have Shea, another top four defensive pairing player, and then we scouted. Jake Gardner, who fits defensive pairing three. But again, don't want to really bring that in. So unfortunate to see that the trade isn't really going to work out for Zucker. Which does kind of suck. We might want to take a look at some maybe some other central 
division teams such as the Dallas Stars see what they'd be willing to give away for wingers. And if they have anything worthwhile, Guniaroff might be a nice little shout. Would want to definitely scout him and see. Last scouted 1019. Uh, let's do a complete scout on him to see what we can get out of him. Jamie Ben, we're not going to be able to afford him. Let's check their right wingers. Radulov Pavelski would be kind of cool. He's got 6'8". Let's also scout Joe Pavelski. I want to do a complete scout on him and see what is going on. As of right now, he fits all... Oh, I was going to say all forward lines for Radulov. I don't know if we'd be able to afford... He's 6 mil. Radulov would be a nice little shout. All forward lines... Let's let's scout him. We'll we'll revisit these Dallas Star players in just a bit. But if we could snipe either Radulov or Pavelski, that would be a nice little steal. We definitely have the cap room to make that work. So we'll have to wait and see. Radulov again fits all lines. So hopefully the scouting report comes back that that is going to be the same. That he will fit all the lines, and that might be the the player we can sort of move around the lineup who also is X factor. So that will be interesting to see moving forward, but let's get into the simulation battle of Pennsylvania, Malkin, Crosby, Malkin, Kevin Hayes on the goal. Second period goes by Crosby gets a second and wow, we lost the game. We we're up five, one, four, one going into the third and we lost. That is a heartbreaker. That's an absolute kick to the gut right there, guys. And wow, that I'm honestly shocked as we get into Christmas break before going up to Boston and a Canadian road trip. Smolkin leads the way in points. That I cannot believe we lost that game, to be honest. It is quite disappointing. Needless to say, 1 1, Carter w Wagner on the goals. Period 2 is 2 2. On the day, will quick sim period three, and Moreno wins the game for the Pittsburgh Penguins with five minutes left in the game, which is awesome to see again. I like seeing that the simulation is able to pull through as we've got a big game here against the Toronto Maple Leafs. Found ourselves first place in the division again. It's going to go back and forth whether we're in first or not. But this is a big-time game here against one of the top teams in the NHL, if not the top team. 51 points leads the way above the Golden Knights. This is going to be interesting. Although, we're going to take a quick pause before we do get into that game. And we're going to take a look at the Dallas Stars. We're going to throw Zucker in for the trade. Because that is who we are looking to get rid of. Again, 5-5. Not too bad on the price tag, but is it going to work with these Dallas Stars players? So let's take a peek here. Left wings first. We scouted Guniaroff. Cap-wise, it is a huge play for us. He is a great player. Great speed, great shooting. He shoots left. He was scouted forward line two, so he would fit in as well as he fits all penalty killing lines. 24 years old, he's only got one year left on his deal, which is kind of a drawback because that he might he might ask for a lot. You never know. Radulov, let's see what we've got with him. Good speed, unreal shot, unreal hands, decent physical. Top six forward lines, which is interesting. So he could mix around, so if there are injuries... We could mix and match, which isn't bad. Superstar abilities, it's up there. That's pretty awesome. He's only got one year left as well, which is interesting. Um, yeah, 35 years old, so he is a little bit older, as well as Joe Pavelski. Uh, see, I mean, he's 37. Not the best of speed. Okay shot. He's got the experience. Two-way forward, bottom six forward player, though. At this point, I would really like... Ah, it's really tough because Gudiaroff would be great. I feel like he would work awesome, but I don't know if... Yeah, the trade value is just not going to be there. Especially with one year left on his deal. 
And he's not one of those like rent a players. You don't want to just rent him. He's somebody we're going to want to sign. And who knows? He might want five. He want he might want six. I don't know if that's going to be able to work out. Or do we try trade value for Radulov is about the same. Top six forward. Six eight cap would work just for the swap right there. I'm wondering though if we swap to Guniarov, because then that is more of an investment for the future. That cap barely works, but we're gonna have to give up some picks for this specifically. Rookie skaters. We don't really have anybody to give up. Um yeah, this is tough. This guy, Lingre, Lingre, I don't really know how to say him. Oh, they don't, they're not going to be able to take more players, which kind of sucks. I was going to say, we could maybe pop him in with some picks because we do have a fourth, fifth, sixth, bunch of seventh round picks. So let's just throw seventh. We might have to give up. Oof, I don't want to give up our second round pick. I think next year we have an extra pick, do we? We have two second round picks for next year or, or two years from now. So maybe we do, we're going to have to possibly give that up because the, again, this being an investment, that is looking pretty close. I'm wondering if they'll do that. Second, seventh, and Zucker for Guniarov, who we will have to re-sign. Elite medium, again, this is more of a investment building player that we could maybe keep in the club. Trade is rejected. So we're going to have to sweeten the deal up a little bit more here. Throw in another 7th round pick. I mean, again, anything is going to help. That is rejected. Not too thrilled to part ways with what you were asking to send. So let's swap this 7th out with maybe... Don't have a lot of picks in 2023 either. Maybe a 4th for 24? I don't know if this is going to work. Second, fourth, seventh, Zucker, Gunyarov. Trades rejected. We're going to have to really sweeten the pot here. And, man, we might have to cough up our fourth round pick this year. Let's try for our fifth instead to see if that goes through. That's rejected. Okay. Now, if they had a roster spot available, this would I think this would work, to be honest. So let's get maybe this year's ah, fourth Oh, uh, this is tough. This is tough. I don't want to give up our second round pick. But at the end of the day, maybe if we swap this around, we'll give our second this year. And then we'll swap the fourth for maybe... Ooh, I don't want to do two seconds plus Zucker. That's that's a lot. The trade value is just not there, guys. It's 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 such a tough move to make. I don't know if we do give the two. I'm honestly curious if two second round picks will will get the job done. As much as I don't want to do it, we're going to try for it. We'll take off the seventh. Two second rounders, Zucker for Gudiarov, who we're going to have to re-sign. Trade is accepted. Okay. Okay. As much as I didn't want to do that, it is what it is. I, I'm honestly happy with it. Now... Depending on what he's going to want, that is where it could go sideways. But Gudiarov, sniper, second line player, he's he gets a plus one. Okay, so that it works. I'm not too mad about that. Let's also get him on the power play, and then we also have to throw in what's his face back into the lineup. Uh, Pedersen, oh, Gudiarov doesn't work. Who doesn't work? Kapanen doesn't really work. Uh, neither does Rust. Does that work? Hmm. Kapanen doesn't work, which is interesting. I'm going to have to swap him out with... Left defenseman, anybody? Does Joseph work better? He gets the zero. Okay, we'll, we'll work with that. Path four-man power play, we're going to have to throw in... Um, I mean, we'll throw Gunnar off. We'll throw him right in there. Why not? And, ooh, minus three. Rust doesn't work again. Which is interesting. So we'll throw Rust out. 
Let's throw Joseph in here. Minus two. Okay. Well, that's gonna have to. It's gonna have to do because it's it's just not gonna work out any other way. But hey, we'll take it. Um, again, kind of sad we gave up two seconds, which it is what it is. We'll, we'll we'll take that all day. We'll roll with the punches. But if it pays off, I mean. Oh, actually, I was going to say before we even hop into that, I want to see what he wants. If he wants four or five on the nose right now, we're going to give it to him. A hundred percent, we're going to give it to him. He does want to resign. Oh, ouch. Eight years or two years, eight mil. That is a big ouch. But on the bright side, he might really pop off and become the player we want him to be. The one casualty though might be brian rust we might end up losing him because he wants five plus we have to re-sign malkin who wants seven he wants a one-year deal let's at least give him a two-year deal at six eight malkin maybe if we can get him to take a discount i do want him signed for next year a hundred percent we want to bring malkin back he's a key piece he's he's the franchise Latang wants two years at let's say six one five. Let's see if we can get him to take a big pay cut. Again, if we can get our top players to take those pay cuts, we're gonna be able to sign our depth players like Demers. Ooh, trade for asset. We don't want to do that. So we'll see what those guys say before we make any more signings because Guniarov, again, that is a big commitment. He wants a big time paycheck, but he's elite medium which I think is a great play for us. Heinen is restricted. Again, trade for assets, so we're not going to worry about that. We're going to back out of all of this. Again, we made, I think, at the end of the day, two second-round picks. What are the odds that they're actually going to pan out? Probably not. So I'm happy bringing in elite medium. Again, we're probably only going to play two or three seasons anyways with the Penguins. But I'm, re I'm really happy with that move. Uh, it's it's good for the club. It's good for the franchise. I think it's good for Guniarov as well, especially if he scores this goal. Demaris is the one who scores. But we've got a barn burner here against the Leafs. Crosby scores. Quickson period three. Dumoulin Bluger. So we went, we shut out the best team in the NHL with, I don't know if it was DeSmith and Net or not, but with our backup goalie, which is awesome as we go up against the struggling Ottawa Senators here. To continue on to end the month of December already, which is kind of crazy to see. We're pretty much almost halfway through the season at this point. As little New Year's Eve battle in Ottawa. I know the Penguins in real life really just struggled against the Ottawa Senators. As we are tied going into the third period. We'll get a slow sim to start things off as Gensel, Jake the Snake, scores on Murray to make it 2-1. Going in with 10 minutes left to play in this game. Being outshot by the Senators, which is a little scary. Not going to lie, but hey, we'll take it. Power play opportunity for the Penguins. Unable to get that thing going through the back of the net. Can we get an empty netter? Possibly. We do not, but we do win the game. Two crucial points, especially against one of the bottom feeders. In the league, we need those wins as, oh, you know who I forgot to put back into the lineup? Who needs to go back in? We need to get our boy Pedersen as we're starting to pull away a little bit with the division with these moves. And, you know, I'm I not going to lie. I'm pretty happy about it. Again, Chad Ruweedle, 18 games, one assist, minus four. Thank you for your contribution. It was not much. We are going to swap you out with Pedersen, who I believe has had a better season. Yes, 23 games, 5 points. He is minus 1, but hey, he's going to get the job done, I think, a little bit better. Joseph here, 6 points, 29 games, plus 3, not terrible. Marino, 3 goals, 10 assists, 35 games played, plus 17. That is amazing for 21 minutes played a night. As Demers for defensive defensemen, those are some great offensive stats right there. Really happy with it. Honestly, I'm kind of just doing a team breakdown right now with points and stats and how they're playing. I'm honestly super happy with Demers. Again, defensive defenseman, he gets the job done. I'm 
really happy with his performances so far this season. As Dumoulin, 12 points, plus 30 for 23 minutes, played in 35 games. That's, again, amazing stats as Latang leading the way on defense. Seven goals, 25 assists, plus 25. Superstar factor, ability, plus everything else, which is awesome to see. I'm really happy with how Latang has played out. This season, even though they are not, they don't have a plus or anything whatsoever. Dal- uh, Heinen here, 35 games played, 7 goals, 3 assists, plus 1, 9 minutes a night. Again, that's great stats for a 4th line player. Brian Boyle, 6 points, minus, uh, plus 1, 7 minutes played. We might look to swap him out and give some other players some playing time. Same with Brock McGinn again. 2 goals, 5 assists. Nothing crazy, nothing really popping off. Again, we might look to swap in somebody here or there. Let's see. Kapanen, 6 goals, 18 assists, plus 13 in roughly four, almost 15 minutes played a night, 35 games. Top 6 forward medium. Again, 25 years old. He's going to be a key piece of the franchise moving forward. Teddy Bluger, 9 goals, 8 assists, plus 15, 13 minutes played a night in 35 games, which is very good as well as Hosang, one of our free agent signings this offseason. Hasn't really popped off in real life, but he has popped off for us with the games he has played. Let's just honestly take a look at his career stats, and you'll be able to see again. 17 points so far, and Islanders, 2 points. Uh, Let's see here. Islanders, 22 games, 12 points. Not terrible. 10 points, 21 games. Again, apparently he's had attitude issues, but... He's getting it put together here in Pittsburgh, and we couldn't be happier with 17 points in 35 games, plus 14. We'll take it for a nice little free agent pickup, which actually, let's go back to Hosang. I forgot his contract. It's only 900000 for two years. Like, that is a steal. We will take it. Brian Rust, again, he wants about 5.5 mil coming up here soon for next year. Again, Decent stats. We might have to let him go. He's been a great piece of the franchise. Again, 7 goals, 15 assists, only plus 6. Again, this season compared to the last few. Again, he put up 42 last year. 50. He's, he's going to be that 40 to 50 point guy every year. We'll have to see where he finishes up. And, and from that point moving forward, we'll give him a contract accordingly to his play. Jeff Carter. He's played great. He is minus one, which is quite concerning. 11 goals, 13 assists, and 35 games played. Ah, You know, it's it's tough with him because he's a great, great defensive, defensive player. I mean, if you just look at his last two years, or honestly, last four years with the Kings, he's already almost beat that. Uh, best year, 18-19, after, after one of the, the cup years, the cup runs of 60-some-odd points. Started dropping off. He's doing pretty good. Um, Pretty much a minus player the last couple of years, except last year with Pittsburgh. But, again, really happy with what he brings to the team at that age of 36 years old with the contract of 2.63. Again, he's going to be somebody we're going to have to re-sign as well. Again, with those stats, it's going to be hard to to pass him up or give him away. Although face-offs, not the best. Getting in to Gunnarov again. He's on the year 7, 15, and 34 played, plus 15. With Pittsburgh, he's played two games, one assist. So, again, not too shabby. It hasn't really broken out much. He's played three years in the NHL. We'll have to see where he steps up. Again, 30, 29, 21. I mean, 21 and 32 games played is not too bad at all. So, we'll have to see how he ends up the year, uh, which we'll find out. Gensel. 14, or 15 goals, 14 assists in 35 games played, plus 20, almost 20 minutes a night. Just checking his stats in more detail. 29 in 35. Again, he's that 50 to 60-ish point player. Had that 76 uh, point year, which was awesome. He's on pace for a really good year this year. So it'll be interesting to see how he finishes up. Crosby. Our captain, 16 goals, 29 assists, plus 22. Taking a look at his stats, again, 45 points in 35 games played. He's Sidney Crosby, guys. One of the best players ever. I'm not going to say the best player. He's definitely not. But in the Penguins history, he's probably one of the most important players of all time. 
I mean, Lemieux, I'd say, definitely edges him out for sure. But Crosby, he's got to be solid number two for franchise history. Malkin, he's having a great year. Simulation-wise, 17-26 plus 24. 20 minutes played. He's he's on fire, guys. Not the best. I mean, solid year last year. He was injured. But honestly, the last full couple of seasons, 74-72. Again, not, not great, not terrible. But... We want that 98 season. We want that 17-18 season to be what he has this year. And as of right now, he's on pace for that. So it's going to be interesting to see. Uh, let's take a look. Can, will they show me goalies? Will they show me goalie stats? I think they will. The Smith, again, he's bringing his stats back. 909 with a 286, one shutout. Almost looks like he has a notch. He's never been a full starter. He's only ever max max games AHL 41. So, again, we'll have to see how he pans out. Let's take a look at Deming. It, those are pretty much AHL stats. He probably doesn't. Yeah, I was going to say he hasn't played a game yet. So that'll be interesting to see. I'm wondering if they'll show us Tuca. Yeah, they'll show us Tuca's stats. He's playing great. 9-11 with a 2-2-6. Two, two, 18 wins in 27 games played. Taking a look at his stats, I mean, he's four shutouts. So he's, he's playing great. He's He's Tuca. He's gonna get the job done. He is injured, which is which is tough and sucks, but it is what it is. I do actually I'm gonna give a shot for one of our bench players. And we're gonna bring in Zach Aston Reese to see what he can do. Honestly, I kinda wanna also give uh let's give Rodriguez a go on the right wing as well. On that fourth line, he doesn't work on any other lines, but we'll give them a go with Boyle. If they start popping off, that would be great. If not, again, we can swap back to what it was. But that is going to be it for today's episode, guys. If you did enjoy it, be sure to drop a like on this video. Again, we are at the January, or I'm pretty sure it's December 31st right now. End game, it is December 31st. Honestly, let's just sim it up in January. The new year is upon us. And Chris Letang is going to take the pay cut as well as Malkin. That is huge stuff, guys. So we will work around them. And maybe after the uh, at the end of next episode, we'll reassess contracts. We'll see how Gudiaroff is doing. But as it stands right now, guys, we are first in the division by a point, And that is where we want to be. But again, that is going to be it for today's episode. I hope you guys have a good one. And as always, stay dusty.